To some people, fees may seem like a pretty insignificant part of investing. After all, what's a few percentage points off of an annual return? But the average Canadian household will pay $323,000 over the span of their life in investment fees. It's hard to avoid the costs of investing, but a basic understanding of how these investments cost you can go a long way in reducing this amount. So what types of fees do investors need to pay? And how can we minimize these expenses? We'll answer these questions and more on today's Plain Bagel. Fees are unfortunately very hard to avoid in finance. Whether you're buying, selling, or even just holding on to your investments, you'll likely find yourself owing money to one institution or another. Conveniently for some, these fees are often automatically deducted from your investment balance. Make them easy to ignore. But you should always be aware of how much your holdings are costing you. After all, fees are more or less a source of negative return. If you earn 6% on your holdings, but you're paying 3% in fees, then you're only taking home a 3% return. And that's before any taxes. It's easy to see that minimizing our fees can maximize our returns. And while some investments may justify a higher expense, others may be dead weight to your portfolio performance. But before we get into comparing investments, let's go over some high level fee concepts. Generally speaking, you'll encounter two types of fees when investing, variable fees and fixed fees. Variable fees, such as percentage fees, adjust to the size of your investment positions, whereas fixed fees will be the same regardless of the amount involved. The types of fees you pay can, or at least should, influence how you invest your money. For example, fixed fees often discourage investors from investing small amounts of money. It's clear why when you compare a $25 fee on a $100 investment to the same fee on a $10,000 position. The relative size of the fee is much larger with smaller investments, making it a bigger chunk of your wealth lost to an expense. As you move to a more granular level, you'll find that different investment vehicles can come with pretty different fee structures. So let's go through some standard investment groups individually, starting with stocks, bonds, and other exchange-traded securities. The main costs to consider with exchange-traded securities are brokerage fees, which you pay to something called a broker. A broker is a person or company that takes investment orders from their clients and then finds other investors to take the other side of the buy or sell, in the same way that real estate brokers find buyers and sellers of real estate. Brokerages will provide investors access to an exchange and take care of administration involved with transferring ownership of investments. And while they can be used to purchase virtually any investment vehicle, they typically focus on individual securities. In order to use a broker, however, you'll typically have to pay a transaction fee whenever you submit an order for security. This transaction fee is oftentimes a lump sum or dollar amount per unit. For example, a broker may charge you $20 for transactions with less than 500 shares and three cents a share for larger orders. Brokerages may also charge a recurring fee for having an account with them, since there are costs associated with storing investments. Now, the cheapest brokers available are known as discount or online brokers. These brokers provide transaction and custodian services, but not much else. For investors looking for a higher level of service, there exist full service brokerages which oftentimes provide stock recommendations and advice to their clients, but at a higher cost. Different brokers may also provide you access to different securities, where some may only allow their clients to buy and sell stocks and bonds, others may have access to the derivatives market or initial public offerings, so make sure you research a broker before committing to their service. While brokerages work well for investors looking to take on the work themselves, it can be an expensive option for investors just starting off. Luckily, managed solutions such as mutual funds and robo-advisors often have more accommodating fee structures. Namely, these investment solutions typically charge a management expense ratio, or MER, which is a variable expense. The MER is a fee paid to cover the operating costs of the managed solution, including the salaries of employees, sales commissions, and distribution costs. This fee is often represented as an annual percentage, though you'll typically pay a monthly amount based on the balance of your investment at month's end. It's pretty easy to compare the costs of different investments by looking at their MERs, though different managed solutions oftentimes have their MERs within certain ranges. Mutual funds, on the one hand, often have MERs between 1 and 3%, while ETF MERs are often below 1%. Robo-advisors and discretionary managers will often charge an MER on top of any mutual or ETF MERs from the account, with robo-advisor costs falling below discretionary managers. While it's great to find an investment solution with a low MER, be aware that low MERs don't necessarily equate to better investments. Bond funds, for example, are almost always cheaper than equity funds, but they typically cannot achieve the same level of returns as equity funds. 
Likewise, many investors advocate ETFs over mutual funds and robo-advisors over discretionary managers because of their lower fees. But the levels of service are different between the options. An investor may find their extra fee justified if they value the advice provided to them by their mutual fund representative or discretionary manager. So while minimizing fees is important, it's also paramount that you account for what your fees cover. If you believe that you need more support with your investments, then an advisor may be worth the higher MER. Now, unfortunately, the MER isn't the only expense you'll face with managed solutions. You still have to cover brokerage fees when you buy an ETF, since it's traded on an exchange, and some discretionary managers pass on their brokerage costs to their clients. While you can avoid using a broker with mutual funds, some funds charge investors a load fee, which is basically another type of transaction fee. A load is a sort of sales charge or commission that investors pay when transacting mutual funds, but its nature depends on the specific mutual fund that you buy. Some mutual funds charge the load fee whenever you buy units, whereas others charge you whenever you sell. Some don't charge any load fees, while others only charge a load if you hold your units for less than a specified period of time. To make matters more complicated, some mutual funds come in different versions, each of which offers their own fee structure and investing rules. So a bank selling a US growth equity fund may have an A, D, F, and I version of the same fund. These versions, known as series, each come with different fee structures and restrictions intended to accommodate different types of investors. And I'll leave a link down below in the description where you can find out more information. But I mention all this to clearly demonstrate that fund fees come in a variety of shapes and sizes. So if you're going to buy a fund unit, you need to properly research it and ensure that you have a complete understanding of what you're getting into. One way you can go about doing this is by grabbing the investment's fund code, which is an alphanumeric identifier unique to the mutual fund, and Google the investment's fund facts document. This file will give you a quick two page or so summary on the investment, including important details on buying and selling units. You can do the same with ETFs, though you'll have an alphabetic ticker instead of a fund code, since again, it is an exchange traded fund. Researching your investments before buying them will help you understand how their fees work, it may save you from a headache further down the road. It's needless to say that fees are complex. While there are other fees such as performance fees that weren't covered in this video, the important thing is that you understand the fees of what you are invested in and how you can minimize them. Always compare the fees of your investment options and review the services you pay for to ensure that they're worth the cost. When transaction fees are present, bulk your orders and limit how often you buy and sell. And of course, before purchasing any investment, make sure you research the fees and restrictions specific to that solution. After all, only by understanding the costs of your holdings can you optimize your investments and make sure that your money is working for you to its fullest capacity. And with that said, we're out of time. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe. If you have any feedback or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. For The Plain Bagel, my name is Richard Coffin. Thanks for joining me today.